Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through synchronous counters again, but this video is going to focus on how we take up counters and turn them into down counters or vice versa. Okay? This is for Project Lead the Ways Digital Electronics course, and if you like this video or, or you need more like it, you can go to YouTube and look for Kisker Educational videos and see what I've created there. So let's talk a little bit about synchronous counters and the characteristics. Remember what we're doing is we're manipulating the JK inputs. Um, and that's what we're going to do in order to, to cause the counter to function like it is. If you need a more detailed explanation, go watch the previous video about an introduction to synchronous counters. But what I want you to remember, though, is this. That AND gate down in the bottom right corner, what it was doing is just saying, okay, when I have a 1 that comes from both of the previous inputs, okay, from both of the previous flip-flops, excuse me, and I need both of those to output a 1, that's what's going to force this to go into toggle mode. And when this is in toggle mode, then the next time the clock hits, it will flip. Okay. So what it meant is that the truth table looked like this. For up counters, when the previous flip-flops output was a 1 for C, then that's what caused B to change. When C output a 1, the next time the clock hits, B would change. Or in the case of A, when both B and C were 1, that's when caused that's when it caused a to change okay whether it was going from a one or going back to a zero well if we want to count down we need to remember something we need to remember that really a b and c represents the fours twos and ones position so this is the number zero or this is the number four plus two which is six this is seven so this is counting zero one two three four five six seven zero one two three so on and so forth okay if we want to down counter then we need to count in reverse. A is 4, B is 2, and C is 1, which means we start with 1, 1, 1, and we count our way down until we get to 0, 0, 0. And if you pay special attention, you'll notice that what's happening here is 0 causes B to change in the next location. A 0 for C causes B to change. So in other words, it's not a 1 that we're looking for, it's a zero. Or in the case of A, for A to change, B and C both have to be zero as we're counting down. So in other words, what we're looking for is not Q, but we're looking for its opposite, Q naught. So it's very simple, in other words, to make the change here from a three-bit up counter that's synchronous to a down counter. All we have to do is instead of looking for Q, for this input, I look for Q0. So I'm going to delete this wire. I'm going to run it into Q0 instead. And here, we are not looking for Q, but we're looking for Q0. So I'm going to delete this entire wire here. And this needs to come over and get its signal from Q0. Here, this doesn't come from Q anymore, but I need to go from Q0. I lost my color coding, but the message stays the same, okay? Yeah, I don't like how this is overlapping, so I'm going to take this and drag it down just to make it easier to understand. There you go, okay? And now, because I'm looking for Q0 in both situations, when I have Q0 for both this wire and this wire, it will place this into toggle mode because J and K will both be high. Press start, let it run, and now you can see that I have a down counter. So that's how you create down counters as opposed to up. You just switch Q to Q naught. It's, it's kind of like the polarity thing with asynchronous counters. Hopefully that makes sense. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add a fourth bit to make a four-bit up or down counter instead of a three-bit.